Home Harvest is a one day event where edible gardeners open their gates for people to come look, learn and leave inspired to do something similar in their own context. Today with the open garden I've learnt a heap from different people coming in and saying, oh I do this and that, you know. Would you like some walking onions too? <laughs> they're good, they're good. Yeah, I've been gardening. I mean, I started even in Berlin. I had a tiny little balcony and I grew really good tomatoes. I started with that little plot up the top um, and grew some veggies for the family. Sometimes lettuce feels a little bland after you get addicted to it. So I was so knocked out by the taste again of really fresh salads and just being able to go out and pick a handful of rocket in the depths of winter um, just wowed me and so that was my guiding force. Well I resisted gardening for a long time because I knew, well, I, subconsciously I knew that once I started gardening that was it, I was done. So once I started gardening yeah, that was it, I was done. We bought the property about 10 years ago and when we did it was lawn. The four of us have slowly over that 10 years uh, tried to develop uh, a sustainable lifestyle, sort of stage by stage by stage. Now I grow a lot of plants that are bee attracting, as you see. Yeah, so there's always something flowering. I like the idea of making a garden, a productive garden, look really, really pretty, you know, to make it a really nice space to be in. I think it's really good to grow different things all together because they basically feed the soil and, and you know, make things a lot healthier for everything else. Very quickly I realised that um, the soil was a challenge and that that became my mission. I think I'm a livestock gardener. I think that what I'm here for is to make worms comfortable so that they do their good work. Isn't that gorgeous? Still got last few little worms in it. I mean, I was a lazy gardener to start off with. You know, I had a lot of other things going on in my life. I didn't really want to have to have another intellectual learning process for gardening. And so I just sort of put stuff in and watched what, you know, stuff came out. But after a while you do sort of notice this and you notice that and you do engage. And it's an easy learning process because it's so practical. It's, you know, literally hands on. You're trying to grow really, really happy, healthy plants and it's not that hard. The food from the garden is just so, so sweet and fresh and you don't need to do much with it because it's just so tasty. I've learned to try and extend the season. I use my little hoop tunnel which can help me to raise seedlings indoors early. Um, also I try to find plants that will grow at the same latitude around the world because that can extend your repertoire of plants that you can eat. In times of precariousness, where that food security isn't as certain anymore, um, people just go straight to gardening. Like when the coronavirus came along, I thought, I cannot leave here. I'll be fine for years or forever. Growing food is also a powerful and positive response to the climate emergency, which is predicted to bring increasing disruption to our lives. So this year is my um, chamomile and herb lawn, so you probably, as you walk over it, you get the aroma. I know that I can supply my own food. I do a lot of preserving, pickling, uh, and so on, drying. Uh, I've got a, quite a big larder <laughs> and freezing as well. Cities can't necessarily grow all their own food, but they can have a meaningful role in growing some of their perishable fruit and veggies, and in doing so, help create a vibrant food culture. It's so, it's such a visceral satisfaction to feed people. It's such a wonderful, you feel very much part of the earth. You feel part of the natural cycle of things. Um, you've got things to care about. Um, I find it very calming uh, and levelling and, um, I think it's good for mind and body. Just give it a go. 
really with whatever you do, stick something in the ground. Do what you can do and with every uh, success you'll have a failure, but just keep going. Plant something, anything, whether it be a bit of parsley that you get from the hardware shop or something that a friend gives you and just watch it. Go out first thing in the morning and just sit with it as if it was a chook. I think you can just see that you really don't need much space sometimes to develop a garden and even a tricky hilly site can be developed. Well, it's been very inspirational. <laughs> Makes me want to lift my game a bit and get into it a bit more. Good for your mental health. <laughs> Everyone has come to us um, and said how inspired they are, but we're just saying right back at them how inspiring it is for us to feel like there's this, you know, this growing interest in growing your own food. I think that growing food for oneself is a revolutionary activity. It's a really, like, the world is in dire straits in so many ways. Growing your own food is really, really important because it's, there's nothing bad, there's, everything is good. It ticks every positive box, is growing your own food. So regardless of how big or small your backyard or balcony is, we can all use the land we have to grow some of the food we need.